Good morning guys, how are we all doing? Happy Friday everybody, hope you guys have all had a, a great week. I am Dan from Trading with Dan. This is our Bitcoin morning update. So if you guys wouldn't mind smashing that like button, we shall go over to those Bitcoin for our charts so yeah bitcoin on the four hour <laughs> having a having a nice little bounce here uh, you can see we took out these lows uh didn't re get any real acceleration to the downside uh, and kind of uh, kind of swung failure back above and that is now giving us a nice move to the upside um we probably shouldn't realistically kid ourselves the move to the upside is getting driven by uh, get, getting driven by the strength in the uh, stock market futures and obviously this move down um, was off the back of a, a downwards moving price on the futures which we'll look at in a second but but nonetheless we'll take it we'll take it um, obviously dollar is weakening uh, weakening quite significantly as well which we will uh, we'll talk about in a minute as well but um, but yeah the main thing we are looking for here is obviously to get above and close above this uh, 38,000 uh, we probably call it 38,500 uh, to, to round it up to a nice uh, $500 interval level uh, but yeah close the four above there then yeah then we should be uh, we should be looking good uh, for a continuation uh, up to up towards the $40,000 level so um, yeah that is uh, not looking not looking too bad um, obviously we need a decent close uh, in the stock markets uh, today uh, so that we can get like a bit more potential or a potential risk appetite and animal spirits uh, going over the weekend which will then obviously reflect in uh, hopefully reflect in crypto price action over the weekend and obviously then with the stock market futures when they open um, on Sunday evening so also also another one of our favorite barometers of uh, risk appetite is the Ethereum Satoshi pairing which is um, having a very nice move here um, as we can see it hit our level of resistance flirted with that area for a bit uh, and then now is looking to make progress onwards and upwards into what is the next made what is the next level but is also um, probably the uh, the most important level for us to get back above if we extend this along now now that we are now it is important again um, but yeah if the ethereum satoshi pairing gets through this uh, horizontal level um so we can probably call it uh, should we round it up to 0 0.78? Yeah, we probably round it up to 0 .0, 0 0.078. If we get above and close above 0 0.078, it will look good for a uh, for a run uh, to test the previous uh, the previous high and then and then obviously potentially onwards and upwards. So uh, in this being a higher low relative to this low relative to this low, and then we will then be looking obviously for a high relative to this high and this high. If we look at the USD pairing also. Um, it is coming up to an important uh, an important level not quite as important as the other one um, but important nonetheless i would say the most important level for the usd pairing would be uh would be this uh we'll just uh, we'll just yeah 30, 34050 level um but nonetheless this is an, this is a, an important resistance level to get above uh get back above obviously uh this low here but yeah the main one i'm looking for in the usd pairing is above here so obviously if bitcoin takes a nice move up to 40000 that gets a usd value up to around this level we break above here and then the ethereum uh satoshi pairing can break above here then we will probably looking at all system all systems go uh, for our 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 favorite uh, altcoin our favorite probably our favorite asset in crypto so uh, so yes uh, let's have a look at that stock market now um, a lot of this uh, driven off some uh, obviously we're getting a lot of bad tech earnings from uh, Facebook. Uh, wasn't uh, doing too well and a number of others but then we had uh, we had yesterday evening last night we had Amazon and uh, and snapchat and snap um, actually have posting better earnings so that did give us a nice bounce off uh, this support level here uh, so now it is a case of do we uh, continue upwards and take out this this high here and then continue upwards for a uh, for a a, a foray into the next range or are we to come back down, take out this uh, horizontal, and trade back down? It will be it will be interesting today uh, to see how the market trades and the closes. But what I would suggest is if we close above this level here, so call it 40, 45, 50, uh, then I would consider that as a good close. Anything above that, even better close. If we closed above here, four thousand six hundred, 
absolutely fantastic close. So we shall have to see what happens today. Uh, similarly, similarly, uh, closing anywhere down into this uh, into this support zone. Um, whilst it is a support zone, so it isn't the worst thing. Uh, it wouldn't be ideal, but obviously closing below this support zone would not be good. But uh, yeah, um, oil is putting the squeeze on still. Um, a few, a few people, uh, a few, a few, uh, a few professional traders are actually uh, trying to short this because ultimately we will get a decent pullback in this. Um, but obviously they're trying to. It, it kind of was looking toppy here, but I guess too many people were short and they squeezed it up. And there are obviously, obviously supply constraints. Um, that will potentially ease off, um, but yeah, at the moment, obviously, at the moment, this is a bit, well, this is a bit of a pain trade for the shorters, and obviously a pain trade for, obviously, the uh, the people that don't want inflation, because it isn't looking ideal, but like I said, this will have a, a significant pullback, um, potentially, it will potentially only be down to this $85 level, maybe it comes down to 80 but if we keep moving up from here, uh, 85 this horizontal will be a decent level for it to come down to. Um, but yeah, and that will potentially be a buy the dip and that'll be when we start to see the next le major leg up which will really start to ratchet the uh, the inflation pain trade. Um, interest rates also is what is uh, driving um, this uh, this move down in the dollar. Um, the the uh, over here in the UK, uh, we had our our rate uh, rise uh, yesterday. I think it was. Um, but the interesting thing was nine, four out of the nine, i.e., one more person would have made it five out of the nine. Uh, four out of the nine people actually voted for a fifty basis point raising rates. So we were literally a whisker away from a fifty basis point raising rates, which. Um, which uh, yeah, there you go. Uh, obviously, uh, Europe, Eurozone as well, with with Lagarde saying that they're gonna uh, try and uh, try and ratchet down some of their easing. Easing uh, the German Bund, uh, the Bund, which is a ten-year German bond, um, is uh, is now trading positive as well. Uh, just uh, which is an interesting uh, dynamic after being negative for a, a number of years. Um, so. Um, yeah, interesting, interesting dynamics there. So basically what we're having is the Fed kind of moved first with its hawkish stance. Uh, and then obviously uh, the UK and Eurozone, we've seen uh, in, um, obviously the inflation numbers um, then um, have now had to start to start to become more hawkish. We've got interesting in the UK, obviously, um, wanting to raise rates pretty quick. Um, um, yeah, which just brings us brings us to another uh, thing that this is going to cause. Um, you guys obviously probably know that the housing market is pretty buoyant uh, still. Uh, there is probably a rush for people to buy or remortgage and do all that all that fun stuff uh, before rates uh, rates go up and continue to go up. So what will happen is that will potentially die off. The mar the housing market will ease. We look like we are topping in that, and we'll get like a bit of a 2006 top, and then start to actually come down in house prices, uh, or at least not go up, or in certain in real terms come down. Um, and yeah, that will uh, that will certainly uh, start to uh, start to drag on the econ in economy in quite a big way because obviously housing, housing development, people buying new houses, all the new stuff they buy when they buy houses, obviously. Uh, just the remortgaging, the money, the the money that that releases, the refinancing, and all that stuff will uh, pretty much uh, slow down. Uh, probably, probably slow down considerably from these levels, and that'll be a drag on growth. That'll be a drag on uh, GDP and all that, all that fun stuff. Uh, which and, and also it will be deflationary, which is good. Uh, well, I say it's good. It's good. It's good in a way that um, it will obviously. Uh, Bad news is good news. Uh, we're working on the assumption. When I say something's good, it's good for uh, good for asset prices. Um, but yeah, so bad. Obviously, asset prices not the asset price in question, i.e., housing. But um, yeah, good news. Uh, bad news is good news because it will mean that there is the scope uh, for banks to then not have to be so hawkish. Um, so yeah, there is that dynamic again, along with uh, along with what we will have a pullback in oil at some point. And again, it just be from what level it is whatever it comes down to because it's pretty relentless but um but yeah oil prices uh they are gonna they are gonna put the squeeze on uh and and yeah i mean it, this is the very interesting though that we are now seeing this uh now seeing uh uh well particularly the uh, european central bank decide it wants to do something because 
or like once once uh, once those uh, once those rates start to increase, the eurozone is going to be all, all in all sorts of different all sorts of pain, especially in particular countries. Uh, and there's going to be tensions. So there will be tensions. There will be the whole other countries wanting to leave again because they can't take the high rates and whatever. Uh, and then yeah, we'll go through that whole that whole cool stuff like we went through before with uh, with Greece. Um, also, I think with uh, Italy as well, and yeah, it'll just it'll all get it'll all get quite interesting. Um, so, what else do we want to look at? Uh, the ten years still holding around there. Uh, and like I said, I think this can't really realistically push uh, too much higher. I think it does have to make its way down, but we'll see. This is looking quite. I personally, with my biased opinion, think this is looking quite toppy. Other people may see this this is consolidation at the highs. Uh, I guess that is just the difference between their bullish bias and my bearish bias. But yeah, things in things that generally speaking, inflation wise, are looking like they can ease off. I mean, people aren't going to be chasing prices up of goods quite so much when uh, obviously they're paying so much more when oil prices are so much higher, food prices are higher. Uh, potentially, if the house prices don't start to uh go up as much um and they're not refinancing refinancing out of them so yeah interest interesting interesting times um yeah certainly certainly here in the uk for what it's worth not that the uk really is uh, gonna make much difference to the world but in the uk just just because i'm here i guess uh these rate rising interest rates are certainly gonna put the squeeze on a uh, squeeze on people um yeah so obviously obviously on the basis that everyone's not people that haven't really been getting as many fixed rate uh mortgages to get those arm ones adjustable rate mortgages um but yeah um so uh monthly mortgages <laughs> expenses going up i mean it's already apparent with energy bill prices going up ridiculous amounts uh obviously over here in europe not in america but in europe the gas prices are going ridiculous um and yeah that is massively putting the squeeze on people um and um, and yeah and interestingly uh the chancellor here um opted to then give people like payments towards helping towards energy bills which is kind of like the sort of ubi sort of uh way that i think ultimately inflation will be fought uh, it won't be fought by actually fighting inflation it'll just be fought by just printing out more money and giving it to the people that need it so they can buy the stuff at the elevated prices and that is uh, that is a full on uh, a full on uh, Venezuela type policy, uh, full of uh, full on Zimbabwe uh, type policy, and uh, yeah, it will only uh, it will only end in tears. But that will uh, that will um, kick the can down the road a bit, uh, and it will uh, almost uh, definitely uh, give us higher asset prices, including our high beta crypto prices. And so maybe they will go to the moon. We'll see a hundred thousand dollar crypto, especially especially with the monetary. Uh, the monetary aspect of crypto coming into play more so as people then realize that they're just doing ridiculous stuff with the currency um, um, Yeah, rather than just whatever whatever you want to call it whatever you people whatever the reasons are people investing in crypto at any at, at the present moment um, There will be an increased amount of people investing on the basis of its potential monetary uh, currency use um, when they see uh, basically uh, Venezuela type policies getting implemented uh, everywhere um, so so there there you go uh, let's have a look at stochastics has this moved up to help move up helped us out because the stochastics overall were looking a bit negative uh, yesterday yeah for our um, yeah for our moving up got plenty of room to run here so we can probably get that move based on the four hour up to this horizontal and then i mean um stock markets willing stock markets are uh, uh, able <laughs> enabling us then yeah we can break through this level finally and make that move but yeah four hour far out is looking good for that uh 10 hour looking to turn up from a, a relatively low level basically uh basically not quite that low you could you could potentially look at this as a bit of a uh, a bullish reset uh 12 hour looking to turn up at some point maybe over the weekend these will turn over as long as uh, we stay here or higher uh so if we get that good close in the stock market today tonight uh then yeah over the weekend yeah these can potentially turn up and we can see a nice move up towards that forty thousand dollar level over the weekend uh daily still looking all right here two day looking okay here three day just down there waiting to waiting to decide it wants to move up the five day uh pointing up and uh, yeah weekly still down weekly still down but um it will feed through eventually but uh and then obviously bi-weekly monthly still a bit of weight weight, uh, weight on the price action there 
Um, but um, overall, um, overall, if I think if we get that good stock market close today, if if and it doesn't have to particularly be that uh, that amazing compared to where we are now, it only realistically I think has to be. Uh, over this horizontal here so over over basically all this price action we've got here uh, this sort of consolidation if you want to call it that if we close above that uh, so over over basically 4550 uh, 4550 yeah um, then yeah um, we can uh, we can probably see some good price action over the weekend anything better than that I'm great we will almost certainly see some nice moves up but obviously if we do come down if we do uh, uh, test into the support and lose it uh, um, for the weekly closing basis then yeah people will look at the chart these charts over the weekend and be pretty uh, pretty negative so uh, on the basis we have a PPP a PPT plunge protection team and a manipulated market basically uh, I just I will definitely err on the side of they are gonna they're gonna pump this into the close which is totally uh, BS analysis realistically but we'll just we'll see what happens I think they'll try and paint the tape because like I said it's marginal and it will make a big difference with how people view it over the over obviously the weekend so yeah there you go guys remember this is uh, not a financial advice so not a financial advisor always do your own research and I shall speak to you guys soon